my trusty sidekicks and I just got back from a morning walk. It's a chilly spring day here in South Central Kentucky. And uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes to share with you some of the wild edibles that we saw along our walk. These are things that I typically use either in smoothies or in a salad. And uh, some of them I haven't used yet, but uh, I plan to. And uh, so come along with me and, and let me show you a little piece of wild Kentucky. Okay, I'm going to start off with one that I kind of whacked up with the lawnmower the other day. I, I got a little too close. I had intended to save it. This is burdock. And uh, you may know it if you ever lived in the country as cockleburrs. And for some, it's just considered a noxious weed, and really it is. It causes a terror in horse manes and cow tails and, and puppies, too. They get it in their armpits, and it's very irritating, the burrs that these things produce. But if you dig up the root of the burdock, it actually is a very good hormone balancer. This is not one that I've used yet, but I plan to. Right in the back of our yard, and there's something here that is one of my favorites and it's called chickweed. Chickweed is a complete B vitamin complex and the reason why we like these wild edibles they're perennials they come back every year we don't have to plant them year by year and their roots go down so deep into the soil that they bring up way more minerals than the annuals that we plant in our gardens every year. These are actually very delicious they're one of my favorites it's chickweed and uh, I've used it in smoothies, but my favorite way is just to eat it in a salad. Delicious. Of course, all grasses are edible. There's a lot of stuff out here that I'm not quite familiar with yet. I'm still learning. But what I do know I'm trying to implement and I want to share with you too so you can learn and incorporate these health-giving, life-giving things into your diet too. Most of the things that I'm going to show you are fairly universal. You can find them most places. I'll show you another one here in just a minute. They need a natural tick repellent. Here's something that most people are familiar with. This is a wild rose bush and uh, the buds are coming and at the base of the buds of course the rose hips will be left in the fall. Those are really high in vitamin C. I just eat them as they are. Right here next to this little wet weather creek is another one of my favorites. And uh, the flowers are gone now, but the flowers are delicious. But uh, these are wild violet leaves. They're very tasty in a salad, especially when they're young and tender. Um, I especially like to, uh, to use the flowers in my salads. It gives it a beautiful, bright, brilliant purple color. Uh, if I can find it, I'll, I'll put a picture of a salad that I made with, with both of these. Right next to that, I see something else that's edible. It's beginning to fade. But this is called purple dead nettles. It's also edible, and down here in Kentucky, at least, you'll see whole fields of these. It's, it's uh, like I said, it's, it's a little late for this, but it's beginning to fade. But it's usually brighter green here and a really purple flower. These are not exactly my favorite. They, they taste kind of... Uh, kind of like a weed but they're very very edible now right here is something of a southern delicacy and it's a very powerful herb to use the root if you know what you're doing do not use this if you don't know what you're doing never eat the berries of these or the mature plants this is called poke and poke root is uh, very powerful in the treatment of AIDS and cancer but uh, if you use this plant to eat, you use the young leaves and you, uh, you boil them and pour off the water a couple times and then it tastes a lot like spinach. This is poke. It's everywhere. Here's something you see a lot of around the creeks and streams like I'll show you here in just a minute. I'm next to here in Kentucky. It's a fern, a variety of fern. I don't know the actual name of it but it's some kind of fern and uh, in early spring when it comes out it has a lot of these these are called fiddleheads you can eat those once they unfurl 
they shouldn't be eaten. But when they're young and tender like that, they're actually kind of tasty. Fiddleheads. You ready, Charlie? You ready? Get that stick. Bring it to me. Bring it. Right here, growing right on the side of the road, is free medicine, free food. This is Emma. This is plantain. It, there's a broadleaf variety and a narrow leaf. I'll show you the narrow leaf in just a minute. Now Charlie's got to get in on the action. Anyway, plantain, if you chew it up and put it on a bite or a sting, it helps to take the sting out. Um, but it's also very nutritious and when it, um, I'll try to show you one that's blooming out, uh, you can harvest the tops and use like psyllium seed. Of course, everybody knows about dandelion. That's this guy right here. There's one about to open up. Here's what the leaf looks like. It's called dandelion because the shape of the leaf, dandelion, looks like a lion's tooth. You use the whole plant, the leaf, the flower, I've put the leaves, young leaves and, and flowers in salads. It's a little bit bitter, but you know, I, I really don't mind it, partly because I know the medicinal effects of it, but it just is not that bad. You can also use the root as a coffee substitute, but the root especially is very cleansing to the liver. And right over here is clover. I'll show you one in just a minute that's blooming out. Clover is very powerful to balance the hormones. Very good for ladies. That's the clover blossom. There's white clover around here too. Where I grew up down in Alabama, we had crimson clover and the, the flower was much, much redder and more cylindrical, longer, not as round. Okay guys, Emma, move. I'm trying to show that plantain you have your paw on. Emma has her paw on the narrow leaf right plantain. Right here is something very interesting. Right on the side of the road. This is called mullen. You can tell mullen because it's got a very fuzzy leaf. It almost looks like a lamb's ear. If you make a tea out of that, it's really good for respiratory problems. <laughs> 